Come get high with us as we travel to Colorado. She's talking about the elevation. Ah. In order to get to our first primary destination of Glenwood Springs, Colorado, we had to stop for two nights, the first being in Winnemucca, Nevada, and then our second night was at Helper, Utah. On our first day of travel, we took Highway 5 North to Highway 80 East, past our favorite lake, Rollins Lake, up into the Sierras, through Reno, Nevada, and out into the high desert of Nevada, where we ended up in Winnemucca, Nevada, at the New Frontier RV Park. Cheers! We are wrapping up day number one of 16 days, starting night number one of 15 nights here in Winnemucca, Nevada at the New Frontier RV park, which is super clean, ma well maintained. I'm very impressed. This is actually our second time staying here, um, and I'm ago. impressed again. It's just really very well maintained. Winnemucca is a nice one-day drive for us out of the Bay Area, and it's a uh, it's a place we came last year on our way to Idaho. Tomorrow we head out to Helper, Utah, which will be a full day's drive of about 440 miles. Working hard to keep Tiffany Sienna looking good. That's my stew. So we had a couple of hours drive through Nevada before we hit the state line of Utah where the scenery suddenly changed. Within just a few miles of entering Utah, you hit the Bonneville Salt Flats, which is a 300,000 acre stretch of land that is unlike any place else on Earth. A salt crust ranging from a few inches to five feet thick forms a perfectly flat, uniform crust that's visible for as far as the eye can see. Lynn and I stopped at a rest area where we got a great view of the salt flats and I was able to put the drone up for a few minutes. about an hour at the salt flats exploring and having lunch. We were back on the road and within an hour we were on the outskirts of Salt Lake City. To our left we could partially see the Great Salt Lake followed by seeing Salt Lake City at the base of the mountains in front of us. It was at this point as we entered the suburbs of Salt Lake City that we probably encountered the most traffic that we would experience in our two weeks. It was Thursday, just before the three-day weekend of Memorial Day in the afternoon, and traffic really picked up as we hit Salt Lake City and headed south towards the Provo area. Once we got out of Provo, we were back up into the mountains and suddenly the traffic diminished, which really brought down my stress level. After leaving Salt Lake City, we found ourselves on Highway 6, which ended up being a beautiful, couple hour drive to where we ended up staying for the evening, which was Helper, Utah. So the stash cam footage with a smudge on it, sorry about that, uh, really doesn't do this town justice. This was a really cute little town that I think is up and coming and could really, I think, explode with tourism in the near future. It's definitely a place where I'm sure a lot of motorcycle rallies and car shows frequent on the weekends. 
you can see strong evidence that there's people in town that are turning this place into a historic roadway with old-fashioned gas stations, dining establishments, and other museums. I think the owners of the RV park we stayed at also know tremendous growth potential ahead as they're putting a lot of money into their facility. We found out why they named the town Helper. It turns out that the engines, the train engines that travel west from Price, Utah over to Salt Lake City needed these little helper engines to help them up through the canyon in the steep grade. So because the engines resided in this area, they decided to call the town Helper. Day three of our journey took us from Helper, Utah to ultimately our first major destination of Glenwood Springs. But first, we had to get to Grand Junction, Colorado to pick up a rental car so that we would have more flexibility in our local travel. Shortly after entering Colorado, we hit Grand Junction, and then once we got the car, we were back on the highway, and we picked up the Colorado River off to the left and right side of the freeway for the rest of our journey as we took it on into the KOA near Glenwood Springs, Colorado. So this KOA was really well manicured RV campground. There was plenty of space between the sites, and it was situated right along the Colorado River, with several sites actually facing the water. Stu and I were talking and if we ever come back here, we'd really like to get one of the sites right along the river. Other amenities included a pool, a splash pad, a lodge, and a small camp store. What time is it, Lynn? 
mind our hair, we've been wearing bike helmets for the last two hours as we finished up just an amazing two hour bike ride at the, um, what's the? <laughs> <laughs> it was so amazing, we don't know where it is. <laughs> Turn it off. Glenwood Canyon. <laughs> we've just finished a two hour bike ride up the Glenwood Canyon bike trail along the shores of the Colorado River here in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Your thoughts? amazing it was so beautiful you have the river along the you're on a bike path and then there's a river right next to you and then red rock canyon walls just going straight up from the river and then i-70 is above you to the other side and there were rafters on the river and did you see the bighorn sheep i i didn't know that's what that was i saw you pointing i thought mm. it was deer <laughs> Wow, yeah, so it was so cool, such a fun. And then thank goodness for the e-bikes because it definitely had the some elevation. Oh, we needed the electronic <laughs> bike. Yeah, hell, yeah, there were a few times that it had significant elevation. Yeah, and then you got off some gravel when we got down right on to the river, yeah. Yeah, so they were helpful, but yeah. yeah. What was the name of this company that we um, rented from? Canyon Bikes, Canyon Bikes. Yeah, downtown yeah. Glenwood Springs. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. yeah, great experience. So when we're out and about and hungry for lunch, we really enjoy finding unique sandwich shops. And this one, Sweet Colorado, did not disappoint. Not only did it have great sandwiches, it turns out that they offered like a hundred different donuts every day. We tried one called the Cronut, which was a cross between a donut and a croissant. It was 11 layers and it was amazing. They also have an extensive coffee bar as well as they serve wine, beer, and cocktails. So we've got turkey, avocado, tomato, lettuce, cream cheese, pepper jack cheese on bacon, what was it called? Bacon Chum. cheddar bread. And I've got a club sandwich on the bacon cheddar club. Mm. Too bad you can't smell in the video. It smells so good. Mm -mm. Who doesn't love bacon smell? So the next morning we cooked a breakfast on the Blackstone and then we made plans to head up to the mountains about an hour southeast of Glenwood Springs to check out the town of Aspen. So Aspen sits at an elevation of about 8,000 feet. In comparison, Glenwood Springs where the RV was, was about 57, 5,800 feet. So like I said, we were getting high in Colorado. Aspen is a resort town for the rich and famous. Um, it's got skiing in the mountains around it, surrounding it. It has high-end shopping and eateries in the downtown area. And there's mansions that snake up the mountainside. My favorite part was the architecture of the downtown area. It was like every building was different from the one next to it, yet they all blended together and complemented each other, and I just found it to be really beautiful. <laughs> but it's not heavenly, it's Aspen. <laughs> took Independence Pass to an elevation of 11,500 feet. On the way, we passed beautiful mansions, aspen trees, wildlife, roaring mountain streams, wildflowers. There was so much beauty.
One of the last things we did on our Glenwood Springs leg, and probably one of the best things we did, was to go to the Iron Mountain Hot Springs. We had to make reservations several weeks in advance to get in. Uh, we got there and they had 16 different soaking pools and uh, they ranged in temperature from 99 to 108 degrees. The place sat right along the banks of the Colorado River and the scenery was spectacular while you were out there either soaking in the tubs or sitting poolside. I believe, Len, one of the first tubs we got in was like 103, 104, which is a little higher than what we do at home. We're usually 102 in our hot tub. Correct. Uh, eventually, I think the highest we went in was maybe 107. Yeah, couldn't stay in there very long, but it was very therapeutic. I enjoyed uh, talking to some of the different people we met in each tub. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. You have probably six to eight people in each tub, and um, so you get to socialize a little bit. I think the scenery was probably the best part for me, and then the ultimate feeling of relaxation after being there for three hours. Hope you enjoyed part one of our journey. But wait, uh, there's plenty more. We've got parts two and three coming up soon that we can't wait to share with you. In episode two, we head south to Moab, where we see spectacular scenery along the Colorado River and in Arches National Park. Then we wrap up our third video, heading down to the magnificent Monument Valley. Journey with the Gypsies.